Hey folks, what's going on? You see the picture, so you know who it is. Mr. Warmack, I'm definitely in the building. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some topic here. It's going to make your head scratch. You're going to be looking kind of like old boy here in 3, 2, 1. See, look, you're going to be looking like Jonathan Goodluck right here. And yes, that's his real name, Jonathan Goodluck. He's the president of Nigeria. So let's, let's get into this one. Today I'm going to talk about... Um, the Dame Dash interview. And uh, I want to talk about the Dame Dash interview. And the reason I'm talking about the Dame Dash interview, if you don't know, Dame Dash, Damon Dash, as some people know him as, he went to Power uh, 105, the Breakfast Club. He um, had an interview. And in this interview, he. Uh, Basically, was talking about financial freedom or financial responsibility and passing down things to your family, so forth and so on. And, uh, and people kind of felt a some sort of way about this. So, you know, black folks, white folks, every type of other folks. So, I'm about to give you the lowdown. First and foremost, if you go, you, you, Dane says. Now let me mention who he is first, as some of y'all don't know. He's the one of the three founding members of Rockefeller Records. And I'm not talking about the other two, because you should know who the other two are. But this video is not about them, it's about Dame. And uh, Dame has a track record of building businesses. Dame has a track record of making successful businesses. Dame has a track record of shaking things up. Dame has a track record of, of almost anything, if you look at it. I'm not going to comment on his other, like his, like, his legal situation because they, number one, I'm a grown man and it's, that's none of my business. It is what it is regarding to that. You can look it up yourself. Now, Dane went on Power 105 and he told him how, as you should be, basically, I'm going to give you guys a gist. Basically, he said that we, and, and, I, and I've said this a lot too, a lot of us that said on YouTube, this is that Dane had a bigger platform to say and he was correct. He was saying basically black people need to be more entrepreneurials. That we need to have, you know, the spirit of being an entrepreneur. We need to take risk. We need to leave something for your children outside of you know a, a, a welfare EBT card such as that. He was breaking it down. Now envy kind of got shook, and I and it, it is what it is. He could take it how he wanted. Envy got shook in this interview. And he was, he was saying, well, I have stock, I have this, but I, 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 I'm like, kind of like what Dane was saying, I'm like, you may have stock and give it to your kids, but your kids can't get a job if they want to there, they gotta, you gotta ask if they can get a job. I was kind of feeling that. Now let me preface by saying this. Yes, I have a job, but and, and like people know, yes, I have a side business. And I'm going to tell you what I've done before I go on. What, what happened was... I started investing my money in stocks and uh, long offshore, not offshore, but as far as uh, like 401ks and uh, stuff like that. And all my, and I'm gonna tell you that the stock, I mean the 401k, the, the mutual funds I went with, I went with the emerging markets fund. This is back when all the emerging markets were hitting to come up, and I, and I made some decent money. So what happened was, and then that's when the Great Recession came, and you all know the Great Recession. So I started losing like 10, 20% a month on my 401k. And so I, like, I explained this to you guys before, so I got pissed off. And I was like, well, look, if, if I'm going to lose 10 to 20% and like nothing's going to happen, I can lose my own money. And it's still not going to happen. I'm also, well, why am I going to let them just hold my money and I'm losing? I'm also, I'm also trying to see if I can make something out of that 10% or 20% that I was losing. So what I did is I took out, I took it all my money out. And I started this venture here, as you see. Now, in some people's eyes, I'm successful. Yes, I'm successful compared to most. But it, it was a risk on my part. And people go, why do you do this? I, I'm doing this because, like I said, I could... I got things going on right now. I got things that are going on under in the pot that are cooking. Like I said, if you go to my Instagram, I'm, I'm, I'm and, and you would never know this. I'm a, I'm an athlete. I'm, a, I'm, I'm like a sponsored athlete here. You know, for real. You know what it is is. 
I make things happen for myself. I don't know rely. I'm not begging. Like I like like my job. Like it's like all jobs. The economy's bad. They want to pull some BS where, well, you know how things are. And I'm like, I don't care. Do what you have to do to me, because I can rely on this right now. And I know I can. I know if I get the. It's. I told you before. I'm. In, I'm under the catch twenty two. And I tell people this all the time. And what Dame said was true. Right now, I'm comfortable. I'm not forced to go out there, and I'm not forced to be hustling out there to get videos. I'm not forced to be hustling to do this, do that. I'm comfortable. Now, if I lost my job, it'd be a different story. But see, I'm also going to catch 22 is I work so many hours, I, can, I, I got to budget my time. And then I, I work with jerk-offs that don't know, you know, they want some fake stuff. But that's neither here or there. The fact of the matter is, like he said, oh, a lot of people are comfortable. Well, let's, let's keep it real. You don't want to get out there, like I said. I had to, then like when I first started, it was rough, you know. And I was, I was out there, and I would just been hitting the pavement, you know, building my brand, doing this, doing that. I've been mean, just been doing everything. But the fact of the matter is, what Dame says is, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. Because let me put you this way: How are you gonna have an entrepreneurial? How are you how are you not gonna have an entrepreneurial spirit and cry about how your communities need to rebuild? Who do you expect to rebuild your communities? You gonna ask for another more handouts for the government? You go out there begging and with your nose running and run to the government? Aren't you guys getting sick of that by now? The fact of the matter is, you have somebody has to take lead, somebody has to take charge, and and I agree with Dane. I mean, you should. I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with going to work. Everybody works, but at the same time, is you have to do something to ensure you have to you have to look at something bigger than yourself. Like I said, I, I was comfortable working. Like I said, I worked in the steel mill. I did this, I did that. But to me, it was just like, I was I was mad because I didn't like the feeling of people telling me I'm laid off. I wanted to be my own boss. But now with the cameras and stuff, I'm my own boss. Like I said, I, I, I'm just comfortable right now. My job is just it's comfortable. So, you know, the problem is with, with, with uh, here's here's the here's the problem. And it's not a problem with what Dame said, but here's the perceived problem. White folks tell you this: uh, white business leaders, Jewish business leaders, basically, business leaders in general, t tell you what Dame said, and y'all shake your head and lick your boots. When it comes from a black man, y'all don't want to believe nothing, and that's what uh, that's what the problem is. Now, if they had Donald Trump. Or they had uh, Richard Branson, or they had somebody up there that's legitimate in their eyes and said that they'd be they'd be squishing in their pants right now. But since it came from Dame, everyone wants to say, "Oh yeah, well, that's that's the problem in the community." Whether you like him or not, to do to success, he's doing more than what you're doing. I mean, and, and, like I said, success is 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 up to you what that person perceives. I mean, he 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 got his his son got businesses, so he passed on that spirit. He did something right, but the problem is a lot of black folks are negative towards other black folks, and a lot and the majority of black folks are are watchmen. They're the government watchdogs. They're they 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 don't believe nothing unless you tell a white person to tell them, and which I do that a lot. So I'm I'm gonna put that out there right now. I do do that a lot. I'll get like a white friend of mine to tell somebody something that didn't believe me at first, then they believe it. I'm like, it is what it is. But back to the lecture at hand, what Dame said is true. If you want, if you if you want control of your neighborhoods, you want control, you want people to spend money, put 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 money into it. A lot of you don't want to do it. You want others to put money into it. But but you know, like I said, I respect what Dame said and what he said was the truth. I can't front. It, it is. This is facts. So get off your ass. Quit being government crybaby. Quit being government beggars. Quit being with, with your hand out. Quit being. Quit, and you know. And you, you have enough, like I said. If you could, if you can flip the scam of MCA into something, can't you guys do something else? Just saying that. Let's look at it different. Okay. Thank you. Peace.